What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I want to tell you about 10 rules you should know before you buy a motorcycle. Rule 1. Don't buy a motorcycle. Okay, I'm done. Rule 2. Ignore rule 1. Okay, seriously. Even if I tell you not to buy a bike, you're going to anyway. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching this video. Rule three, get some gear. Don't be a fool. Cover your tool. The human body is an incredibly powerful tool. Look around you and observe everything that it has created. It'd be pretty foolish to ride a motorbike without taking steps to protect yourself for when something inevitably does go wrong. Now, I'm not saying you need to dress in a full leather onesie every time you ride your bike, but at the very minimum, you should have closed shoes, long pants, a jacket, a full-faced helmet, please, no piss pots, and a pair of gloves. I choose to wear full leathers because from my own experience, I am not satisfied with the amount of protection that the aforementioned minimum gear offers. Yes, it is hot in these leathers, especially when I have to stop behind a cage that just won't make space for me to carry on lane splitting. But like Moto Jitsu says, I'd rather sweat than bleed. Rule four, start small if you can. Motorbikes can be deadly. A big, fast, powerful and heavy motorbike might not be your best bet if you haven't been exposed to motorcycles before. Now I myself am definitely not the best example for start small. My first bike was a 1200 Bandit, but having spent the past year on the TSR 250, the extreme downgrade has taught me some crazy skills that I likely would not have been confident enough to learn if I was on a big, heavy motorbike. Small bikes are easy to handle. They're nimble and extremely responsive. Learning how to control a small bike through technical situations is much safer than going full send on the biggest bike you can get your hands on. But if, like me, you do have your finger on a great deal for a first bike, even if it's too big for you, you don't have to turn down the opportunity. You can learn on a big bike, but it isn't easy. And like me, you'll probably end up wishing you started on a smaller bike. Rule five, practice. Now, I know you're so eager to buy a bike that by this point in the video, I might as well assume you've already bought it and you're watching this as an afterthought. Now, before you go and show off to your friends just how cool you are to have your attempted wheelie go hopelessly wrong, that you can't even tell which is more damaged between your ego and your motorbike, go and get some practice time in. Dedicate at least half an hour every week to practicing technique, whether it's doing slow speed turns in the parking lot or taking the dirt trails home, if your bike is capable, or even a quick detour along some twisting roads. Make an effort to be a better rider. And remember, practice isn't just about perfecting your skills, it's about building confidence and ensuring your safety on the road. So embrace every opportunity to improve and enjoy the journey of becoming a skilled and responsible rider. Rule six, be situationally aware. Okay, I take a lot of abuse online for this, but in my honest opinion, the safest way to ride is to be paranoid that cars do not see you at all. So you need a secret weapon to help you beat the traffic. And I believe that that secret weapon is situational awareness. You need to be like the missile guidance system. Bitch. You need to know where every vehicle on the road is at all times. Scan and plan. Don't look down. Look ahead and expect the unexpected. Learn how to recognize abnormal traffic patterns and anticipate what's going to happen. There's a guy on YouTube, Dan Dan the Fireman. He is a great resource in learning how to recognize these patterns. You should go and check him out. And here's a bonus tip from me to you. If ever you're overtaking a vehicle on the road, position yourself so that you can see the driver in his side view mirrors. If the driver makes eye contact with you through the mirror, that means they've seen you. So they know that you're there and they can probably expect you to pass. Then pass as wide as possible and ensure that you stay in line of sight of that mirror for as long as possible. Once you've passed, pass and get over with it. Don't linger around next to somebody or hang around in their blind spots. If they can't see you, they're gonna take you out. Rule seven, 
join a group ride. Now group rides are an amazing way to meet new riders that have the same interests as you. Find local riders near you through social media. It may be intimidating, especially if you're an introvert, but it's an easy way to experience new places and meet new people. I've joined all sorts of rides here in Cape Town, from riding with the bike clubs in the Holderberg bike night, to doing coastal night cruises with the 600 fast boys. And I've done many rides in the open countryside with the riders table. You might not fit in or align with every single social group, but you wouldn't know the experience unless you actually go out and try. Rule eight, be courteous. The house of machine says it best, don't be a dick. Unfortunately, riders everywhere have given motorcyclists a bad reputation. And it's a shame that the actions of some of these bikers affect us all. I like to believe that we can change the public perception of motorcyclists by thanking cages for giving way when we're lane splitting, or even giving cages way as we would expect them to do for us. Just don't give way to Cape Town traffic cops because um, they'll pull you over for a routine inspection. Ask me how I know. But also, don't road rage. And please, don't punch out people's mirrors. How do you expect for people to see you if you destroy the very tool that you're expecting them to use? Not only does this not make sense, but you also endanger the lives of every subsequent motorist that passes the very car that you just damaged. Don't do it. It's stupid. Rule nine, maintenance is key. There is no set and forget when it comes to motorcycles. You constantly need to check your chain tension, look for missing bolts and nuts, inspect annoying sprocket bolts that always fail, services, tires, snapped cables, you name it. If something can go wrong on a bike, it probably will. And some bikes are worse than others. At some point, you will find that taking care of small maintenance items yourself is a huge saving. And besides, at least if something on your motorbike breaks that you worked on, you alone are responsible for the bad workmanship. And thus, you didn't spend money for somebody else to do a bad job. Engines are just metal 3D puzzles. So with a little bit of patience, some help from a workshop manual or YouTube videos, there's no reason why you can't work on your own motorbike. Rule 10, have fun. Motorcycles will bring you joy. So go out there and enjoy them. Ride far, ride often, but most importantly, ride safe. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This video was actually inspired by the fact that we lost a rider in the local Cape Town community. So this video is dedicated to Daniel. Um, thank you very much for watching. I wanna say a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. Check out the store, go buy some Casual Riders logo tees and Remember, life is going to throw a ton at you, but whatever it does, don't look down, look ahead. And please, until next time, ride safe.